Hey everybody, welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. It's time for the lemon garden quarterly report video. Yes, guys. So um, we're going to be doing the Q2 2023 report card video. And in case you haven't seen these before, this video is essentially a overview of the services um, and how we perform for Q2. Uh, we're going to go over the swing trade service. It mostly focuses on the swing trade service, but we will also lightly touch on the day trading room and the tutoring service. And then at the end, I will also kind of open the floor up to you to essentially ask you for any feedback, right? Uh, whether you're a premium member or free member, uh, let me know what you think of the Discord, the services. Um, what I can improve on, what's good, what's bad, etc. You can leave a comment down below the video. You can say it on the Discord. All I really want is feedback. Um, that way I can try and improve the experience better, not just for you guys, but also for myself and make everyone uh, feel happy. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, before we get into the swing trades, just make very clear, if you don't want to hear me ramble on, you'll find the timestamps down below uh, if you want to jump to whatever you're interested in. Uh, etc. Okay, uh, if you're interested in becoming a premium member of any kind, whether it's the day trading room, swing trade, or tutoring, uh, you can find the info here in the premium service links room right under the lemon announcements room here. Okay, so you can find it all here. If you want to go via through Patreon, you can find it here. If you want to go through the crypto side, right, you want to go through crypto, you'll find all the info here, the wallets to send to, the payments, the or I should say the amounts for the uh, for the service and what service gives you what, okay? And just quickly to make very clear, <clears throat> if you were to join the day trading room, become a lemon, know that that's bundled with the trade signals, okay? So you'll become a lemon drinker as well. So if you do become a lemon, you also get access to the swing trades as well as a day trading room. But if you become a lemon a lemon drinker um, and you just get the swing trades, you do not have just you do not get access to the day trading room, okay? So you get access to both if you become a lemon tier, but if you become a lemon drinker, you become you get access to one. Make that very, very clear. Tutoring sessions, uh, is two hundred dollars per session. Um, or you could do $600 for four sessions, so you're getting one session free. Uh, it's priced this way because it's a lot of time, and you also get exclusive videos just for you uh, that, that, that is exclusive, okay? And all the, the sessions are recorded, and I send you an unlisted video of our recorded sessions. That way you can reference them backwards as well in case you need to look at what we learned before, okay? So this is, uh, again, price here, but the stuff I teach here, hopefully... Uh, sticks with you and leads you to become consistently profitable if you're not or gets you to the next level of whatever you're looking for all right all right so let's go over to the closed position stock side so we're going to start with the stock side of the swing trade service because i do have some stuff to say on it it's been very slow so looking at q2 as you can see very few trades i mean it's a total of what five trades over three months and there's a couple reasons for this the big two reasons are uh, the whole kind of banking issue we had this year caused some stocks that I believe were looking to be very volatile to end up not, at least at the time. And then the biggest reason is me. <laughs> me, this guy. Uh, yes, so I made a couple mistakes. I'll explain exactly what I'm talking about once we go over these uh, these trades here. So starting off in April, looking at Walmart, uh, played out pretty well. Played out as expected. I never looked for... A huge move on Walmart it's never within my expectations but I will say Walmart specifically moved faster than I thought I would so and on the stock side of the swing trade service there are times where I'll buy into certain stocks like Walmart Costco AT&T and I'm actually looking to hold it three four five six months because um, I don't think it'll get to the place I'm looking to sell it to very quickly and I'm also penciling in being in uh, for dividend rounds right to getting dividends as well so there's another aspect to that uh, you know, rather than just getting from point A to point B, I'm also thinking about, oh, we can get some dividends too. So I was expecting Walmart to take longer to get to where it did, but it actually got there pretty quickly. I thought it would take quite a while, actually. I thought it was going to build out a much larger structure. It didn't. Um, and so it got to the level that I was looking for, and I ended up closing right around it. So it made just above 8%. Uh, and then Array Tech, which was a much more speculative play, unfortunately was, uh, I would say, kind of... Uh, held back because of speculative fear from the uh from the banking stuff 
So it didn't really do too well. It did okay. We made just under 15%, but I was looking for like a 25, 30% move on the thing. Um, but it just didn't do too well. Uh, green energy stuff didn't do that well because a lot of people were trying to take their money out. Very, very speculative plays. But for April, we did okay. We made 22.5%. Um, then May, we only had one closure in May, which was Clover Health. Uh, did okay. Again, also underperformed my expectations. Uh, did a breakout structure. Did a breakout play. Didn't really play out as I as I was looking for it to. Uh, Try to break out a couple times from where we bought it, but it just couldn't get fall through. So I ended up just taking the you know just under thirteen percent profit from it. And Clover Health is one of those companies where it's it's not a really good company. It's not really that good. And it's something where I like trading it, but I if it starts to not really do what I wanted to do. Um, when I wanted to do it, I will just kind of get out of it. So I think it was the right decision at the time. So we did okay. Again, May was very, very slow, which is normal for May, but still very slow. Uh, and then June, to finish off Q2, uh, we were in ARK Innovations and then Rocket Lab. ARK Innovations did okay, uh, made just about 10%. That was actually my goal. I wanted to get to that level, um, uh, you know, where, we, where it got to, about 42 50 43 bucks. So 10% was around the zone I was trying to get get you know some profit, and we got right there. And then Rocket Lab was actually a free trade. So uh, in case you don't know, uh, you know Lime Lovers, free members, you also get free trades. I will I will send out trades I'm taking for free. I do I try and do one crypto trade, one stock trade a month. That's uh, for everyone. Um, and Rocket Lab was the uh, free trade this time around and this was actually the best performing trade of q2 uh for 2023 so it, it was a very very good trade i uh, just made under 20 percent on it liked it a lot i did think it would move a lot faster but i think the banking issue did cause it to slow down so took the money where i could and uh, we got out of it and i say pretty successful trade made just just under 30 percent in june and the total cumulative percentage gain for Q2 of 2023 was 63.09%. Again, not bad. We made money on the quarter. But if you look at it from our past results going back this year, we made 307% earlier in the year. Um, so, you know, we definitely did not do great to our standards comparatively. But this is part of trading. There are going to be down times, lull times. And during these times, it's 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 really the challenge to not lose money, right? And that's what we did. You know, we made sure not to lose money. We tried to stay as vigilant and patient as we could, and of course, staying nimble. So overall, I'm not too upset about it, but the biggest critique I have here, I did not play the banking crisis correctly. I was too defensive. I positioned ourselves too defensively. Um, I probably should have been more aggressive sooner. Could have probably bought a lot more extended stocks that were down, um, and we could have banked in on them, but I didn't. And then... Uh, Secondly, I probably was a bit too overexposed at the time as well to be as nimble as we could have been. So, you know, it just it just it, it, it just ended up playing out in a, in a way where so far we haven't been punished per se in losing money, but we've been punished in the loss of opportunity. So, you know, it's definitely something I've, I'm, I, 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 I know, but I still made the mistake anyway. And uh, you should take that as a sign of, of you know, you it's good okay it's fine if you have a problem of being consistent just guess what everyone does uh no matter how long you do it um you, you're always going to make mistakes but it's how you bounce back and how you kind of uh, you know critique it and, and change it um that that defines it okay so the mistake itself um is something that we can deal with and hopefully as the year goes on as we get into the second half of the year the stocks pick up and we'll be able to let go of some of the bigger positions we have and bank in some profit because you know again it's been very slow comparatively to our past performance and but we still have the win streak going we haven't lost a trade in stocks since uh may april since april sos we lost just under six percent so it's been very very good it's been very very good so far um and this is why i have the swing trade service price where it is right i think i think it has a lot of history i mean we're we're february 2022 we have a lot of history you can go back and look at um and uh and uh, it's very consistent so uh, I, I do think the pricing and everything is very fair uh considering what you get and now let's go to crypto so crypto has been the actually the opposite of the stocks it's been very active so looking at Q2 here, you'll see some things here that don't look like other things, and we'll touch on that. 
uh, June was very interesting. So starting off with April, um, we're actually going to have to go back to Q1 to get more context on this. But as you can see, we were short. We closed a bunch of shorts all throughout April and May. But if you go back here, so go all the way back into Q1 of 2023, notice we were all long throughout January and mostly February. We were long. We closed out all these longs. But as we were closing out longs throughout uh, January, February, and in March, what were we doing? Slowly transitioning short, right? I always say it in our recaps. We slowly transition to the other side of the market as the dumb money rushes into that the side we were on, all right? So that's what we continue to do. That's why Q1 was so damn profitable. So we slowly transitioned short as we were closing the longs. And then throughout April of Q2, we were able to close out these shorts Okay, so on Doge, Stellar Lumen, EOS, Tezos, we closed out all these shorts, did really good, made about 50% on the month. Then May, we had continuation of that monster short on Phantom, about 22%, all the way down to Bitcoin, closed out all these shorts. But if you take a look at Bitcoin, this is where things changed, right? So if you go back to the recaps, if you're a premium member, you know this, but if you go back to the recaps, I had been saying I think Bitcoin's going to go back down towards like the 24s, um, and... I was looking to close out the short around there, but I closed it out at 26.7. Why would I do that? Well, price action had told me as I was looking at the chart and reading it that I was wrong to be so bearish at this time. It was not, it was not painting a structure that was ultimately bearish, but bullish. So I made the decision to not just close out Bitcoin, but after the Kava short here, I decided we need to start closing out all the longs, right? I mean, sorry, close out all the shorts. All the shorts that we were in throughout the altcoins, we started just closing, closing, closing as we were making money because the charts were telling me to flip long. Uh, Kava being the exception, we kind of play Kava all both ways, you know, long here, short here. And then we go into June, Kava <laughs> immediately flipped short again, banked in 10%. We made like 30% off of Kava alone. But we flipped long going into June. We were long everything. We had no more shorts. And then what happened in June? We had the SEC scare. But the SEC scare that caused all the altcoins to dump only moved Bitcoin down max like 3.5%. So what did I do? If you're a premium member, you know what I did that night. You saw the pings and the alerts. Non-stop buying, 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 buying. I bought everything. Uh, everything I could, I bought the best I could added on at the best places I could and it was a painful time for some because some were using leverage and again like I said leverage I can't account for it again go back to the welcome to the lemon garden here where I do not recommend it because there will be these these black swan events as they call them where you can't foresee what's happening and leverage leverage bars you from participating at those times and those times are the best times okay so as everyone was running and in fear we bought into the blood and the amounts we made here actually I have to fix this we have a typo right here let's take this off oh no it's not a typo I'm sorry my apologies I do this when there's too many zeros I forgot this was Shiba Inu and Shiba Inu's like got many zeros so I can't fit all the zeros but anyway back on track um essentially we bought into the blood and for the most part we were rewarded now we did have a, a loss here and we actually had our first break even trade since the service started here so let's start off with uh let's start off with the loss here so this is our first loss since terra luna back in i want to say may or april yep since may right so we had a five percent position on terra luna lost about 72 percent off of that right we and then we had not lost a trade since since then until now right until june here lost just under three percent on ton um and you know this trade was tough because i really had i really believe that ton could do it unfortunately after the sec stuff you know after our add-ons um it just didn't recover strong enough not the same way that you know like a shiba did or stx did um or a cardano it just couldn't recover and the chart was very weak, so I made the decision to take the loss um, and close this trade out. And it was the right decision because 
we closed at a dollar forty-five. It started breaking down to like a dollar thirty, dollar twenty something. So, you know, it was definitely the right decision. Tough though, because I, I did believe TON looked really good. Just couldn't get that follow through. Cardano ended up closing this, uh, closing this in, in profit. Had a nice recovery, banked in a quick five percent off of that. And then same day we closed out XRP, made a whopping twenty-eight point two percent, just under thirty percent profit on XRP. Very good trade, very nice trade. <clears throat> and that worked out really well. And then Algorand. Algorand was probably the most painful. We had the most exposed Algorand. That was the biggest position in the portfolio at the time. Um, I was really, really confident where it was. However, similar to TON, it wasn't recovering strong enough and it wasn't fast enough. And there was too much of a risk. If, if essentially this was going to break down further, the amount I had exposed was going to be too painful to bear comfortably um and it was too risky so i made the decision to get out where it was break even and i did and um again it was a tough decision um i don't regret it even though after a couple days later i think it was like four or five days later algorand did go up it didn't go up much but it did go up so if i was able to hold it i could have banked in some profit but i still don't regret it because it was the right decision okay and this goes into the big mistake i made um in q q2 which we'll get into in a second here uh stx another great trade just made under 23 percent off of that one and then she you know, just made under 20 percent another great trade so overall june was great even in spite of the break even and loss we made about 90.91 percent and our q2 results were 227.51 percent so we did very good in q2 of this year if you combine that with q1 where we made 500 percent above 500 percent this year has been absolutely a monster. It's we're outperforming last year uh, quite a bit. Um, so this has been, and last year we did very friggin' good, right? We did very, very good. Uh, total last year we made 752 percent um, uh, cumulative percentage gains total. So, so for us to uh, do what we did, we, for us to make as much as we've done so far, 227.51, and then 500, we, we're already outperforming. Like we're on the verge of outperforming already. Right? It's like it's in, it's insane how good this year has been for the crypto side of the swing trade service. Um, but getting onto the mistake I made in June here was actually being too exposed, right? I was uh, I, I flipped my bias here on Bitcoin to go long uh, because the chart told me to, and I flipped my bias on everything to go long. And I do believe even in spite of the SEC stuff, I was right because what did we do from the SEC drop? A lot of these coins blasted up, right? They bla we were way above a lot of these coins than where the drop was for the SEC. So the bias was correct. But because I was overexposed, I could not play Algorand. I had to let go of Algorand. TON, I was going to close either way because the chart said so. But Algorand, I had to close because I didn't have enough cash and reserves in case there was more downside. So even though the bias was right, I had too many positions open at the same time that I couldn't participate in keeping Algorand open when it was probably the correct thing to do, right? right? So it is what it is. And that was a great thing for me to experience, a reminder that even if you have the bias correct, you still need to be nimble. You still need to be nimble. And that's why I close out every video, stay nimble. And even here, you saw me break that rule. Now we didn't get punished for it in a bad way. I think this was a good punishment because it's, it's got me back on the ball to remember that don't be overexposed. Be be a bit more picky. Take your time. There will always be opportunity. And that goes for even if you lose money, if you lose trades. It's okay, guys. Take your time. There will be more opportunity. Your goal is should not be to make money, okay? I know it sounds crazy. Your goal is to not lose money. If you don't lose money, you'll make money. That's how this works. Survive the markets and the markets will pay you. All right, so that's it so far. And then as we're looking at uh, Q3, the beginning has been very strong, as you can see. Had some really good plays so far. Um, uh, that's it for the swing trade service. Now, quickly touching on the other services. I already went over the pricing and all that stuff. But just quickly, you know, the day trading room, um, I want to make it very clear. <clears throat> if you've been watching it, you know that we've been mostly focused on Forex. Now, that doesn't mean we only trade Forex. We're only trading Forex right now because everyone in the room wants to because we're either trying to become funded or are funded so if you're trying to be a funded trader or you are a funded trader you're mostly trading forex so that's the only reason why you're seeing forex now if you're someone who wants to day trade with us but you don't want to trade forex well don't worry join the room 
and instead of me just calling out forex trades we'll also do crypto trades so I'm, I'm, it's all about demand right so if, if people in the room want to trade things other than just forex then that's what we'll do we'll just do both <laughs> so if you're interested in the day trading room uh, there you go it's not just forex but if you are interested in forex or you want to become a funded trader hop into the room maybe we can help you out we already got one person funded so we'll see if maybe you can become funded too and then for the tutoring service uh, the tutoring session so again like I said before you get exclusive videos and stuff um, it's very in-depth uh, it's an hour to hour and a half session with me um, and if you do the bundle you're paying for you're paying for three sessions getting four sessions so if you're interested in that um, take a look at it again I would say this is I, I would say it's very valuable because I believe in what I'm teaching uh, I believe that I have the track record uh, to teach it uh, and everything I teach is also not proprietary okay so I make it very very clear guys I am not using anything proprietary I am not doing anything that is secret or this indicator promises you this X and Y I'm not doing that I teach you how to read price action I teach you most importantly how to actually have real risk management create a real risk profile and then I teach you how to actually become a profitable trader that's that's how we do it okay and if you're interested in how I trade for the swing trade service but you don't want to join the swing trade service guess what there's a video that I just put out which is the Fibonacci strategy it's the closest it's the closest way to trade the way I do the swing trade service now it's not the exact way I don't use Fibonacci I use liquidity and stuff but it's the closest way so if you <laughs> and that's for free go check it out again I'm not hiding anything so if you want to check it out make sure to check it out I'll have the link in the description here for that video so you don't even have to join the service and again same thing you don't even have to join the service because guess what got the free trades here too so I make I try to be as transparent as I can for you I try to do everything I can to make everything as clear as day uh, you know uh, of what I'm doing okay and uh, another example of that is is essentially um, the suggestion side of this right so like I said in the beginning of the video um, I open the floor to you guys to leave a comment down below um, or you know message me here on the discord here like right here in general discussion give me some feedback if my you know what you think I can be doing better if you think the services are garbage if you think as a free member it sucks uh, let me know if you think what I'm doing is good let me know it's the only way I can improve an example here is from JD here he actually was the one who said can you when you do an add-on alert alert at what price you did the add-on and that was a great suggestion because if you go back and look at the previous uh, add-ons here uh, let's see like right here the rock lab a uh, buy alert add-on no price right so before I had not done us like the the price I was adding on to you would only get the new average entry and all that stuff but now thanks to JD's suggestion which was a great suggestion um, you get the add-on alert with the price and to me I see it as two things one if you miss my add on alert you can see at what price I did it so if it's below where I added on you can get in at a better price or you can if it's above you can maybe put a limit order and then more importantly it's also transparency right so you can see the math works out right so if I buy here and I originally had my price over here but now my new entry price is here you can see if the math checks out be like okay oh okay, he's above board it makes sense or you can be like oh wait that doesn't make sense he's lying so that's that's the best part of this and I thought this was a great suggestion so again if I find that your suggestion makes sense and something I can feasibly do consistently I will definitely incorporate it and I look for it so definitely leave me feedback guys I really would like the feedback um, whether it's good or bad um, if it's bad please you know please let me know and ob obviously you know, don't be rude about it uh, I, I'd like I'd like to I like the criticism but I'd like it to be constructive of course um, and if it's good please tell me why it's good um, I, I want to make sure I, I, I have a baseline of what's working what's not and what I can improve on all right and that uh that's it that's it guys that's it for this uh, this report card video the quarterly report again I hope I hope everyone's having a good time in the discord I hope everyone is enjoying the services uh, I hope everyone's having uh, you know having having good time trading and uh, you know learning a lot and uh, and uh, I hope everyone who's met each other uh, enjoys each other <laughs> And um, what should I finish this off on? Is there anything else I want to say, or am I just rambling on? Uh, I think I think that's it. I think that's it. I guess I guess one more quick reminder: um, if you really are interested in the services, give it a shot. Give it a shot. At least the swing trade service. I I, I kind of set this up to where if you are interested in the other services, 
you can join the swing trade service and as long as that works out um, and you like it you can then use the profits that you may make from that service to pay for the other services that's kind of how I set it up again if you don't like the swing trade service then guess what you don't have to you don't have to stick with it and it'll let you know that the other services may not also be for you so again you know I, I think that's pretty fair um, and uh, yeah and if again if you like this video or you like the content I've done uh, please give me a like maybe a subscribe a share would be great too if you think it could help other people out um, and uh, yeah that's it guys thanks so much for being part of the lemon garden community um, our small little community and uh, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you and uh, yeah it's, it's been it's been a, a pretty crazy ride that we're almost going on two years uh, it's pretty nuts uh, it, wow it's crazy all right guys uh, remember be patient be vigilant and be nimble I love you guys take care bye